when General McChrystal went forward with his own uh, assessment and his scrub on the ground this summer and laid out his recommendations to the President. Most of us assumed that those recommendations coming from the President's own hand-picked uh, uh, commander in the field would be the recommendations that were at the f in the first part expected by the President and in the second part largely supported by the President since uh, General uh, McChrystal had been his own choice. Um, uh, recent uh, weeks, and, and uh, it's, I guess it's stretching into months now, uh, indicate that in fact our, our expectations uh, were incorrect and, uh, and that as time has passed and in indeed as uh, more and more uh, coalition uh, forces have sacrificed their lives. Um, uh, the President is not on board with the strategy of his uh, chosen general uh, and is still considering uh, his options. Um, as, as that happens, and I understand talking to my colleagues who know better than I that, uh, in fact, a, a decision is not even in the immediate offing. Um, uh, perhaps the time has come for uh, those of us who think about such things to talk about uh, what the way forward is, why uh, General McChrystal's uh, recommendations are important, how they are in fact a, a real path toward success, and, and what uh, perils lie in, in other choices. And it seems to me that one of the more important ways in which we could make things considerably worse in Pakistan is by failing in the counterinsurgency undertaking in Afghanistan on the other side of the Durand line and by allowing the Karzai government to be replaced either by chaos and renewed grand mal civil warfare or by some form of a Taliban version 2.0 uh, restoration either one of which would enable Afghanistan to become in ways far more virulent than it is now a source and a haven uh, for instability on the other side of the Duran line where our interests are absolutely centrally engaged. If you can't achieve a sufficient mass to, uh, to give yourself the prospects for success in a counterinsurgency campaign where uh, the clock both in Kabul and Washington is spinning away pretty fast than your prospects for success. It's not a 50 percent prospect. It, it tends to move toward a one-zero yes or no proposition. Uh, and so this is a situation where if, and I would uh, even say that the 40,000 number um, and, and the numbers that Fred, uh, Fred uh, also takes into account uh, what's happening elsewhere in the country, which we haven't talked about all that much, but uh, the situation is worsening in the north, and uh, the situation in the west in and around Herat uh, is, is something that we actually don't know that much about. Uh, the NATO presence in the west has never been sufficient. Uh, so even to stave off defeat in the near term, you've got to get to at least something like uh, six to eight to 10 brigades, uh, and then you should ask yourself if you're not going to achieve highway speed, why get on the ramp in the first place? Today, at least three actors, India, Iran, and Uzbekistan, are absolutely determined not to see the return of the Taliban to power in Kabul. And they will do all within their power to prevent that outcome. If we, through our choices, end up leaving as a reasonable prospect the chance that the Taliban may return in some form to Kabul, we will have only opened the door to regional security competition, which will be very hard for us to control once we decide to minimize our own involvement in this area. So we are then left with essentially a fork in the road and a choice between two basic strategies. Do we invest and endure because it is the right thing to do both in terms of our narrow objectives and our broader objectives? Or do we simply invest in order to improve the situation sufficiently so as to create, shall we say, a hospitable climate for declining American investments in the region? There is a temptation to think of the latter as offering the way out of the political circumstances that we face. The only problem with that approach is that people can smell the strategy a million miles away. And anything that looks like a temporizing stratagem 
to improve things only in order to provide ourselves with the requisite political cover to minimize our involvement in the region is going to reinforce their own propensity to hedge for the day when the United States finally gets out of Afghanistan and Pakistan. And precisely because this process of strategic hedging is already underway, our tasks with respect to achieving our objectives become even harder. We've got to understand where we're starting from, and I'm afraid that some of the terminology that's being used is obscuring a fact that should hit more emotionally than it does. We are now losing in Afghanistan. It is not a slow win. It is not a stalemate. We're not going sideways. We're not accepting greater risk. We are losing. The enemy is winning. And by the enemy here, I mean the various Taliban groups that have been steadily expanding their, the territory that they control, steadily increasing the degree of governance that they um, can enforce in the areas that they control, steadily transforming their information campaign to lay the basis increasingly for their reestablishment as a legitimate government rather than as an insurgent movement, um, and doing a variety of other things that move them steadily closer to victory and move us steadily closer to defeat. And we have not reversed that trend at this point. In my judgment, we are still losing in Kandahar province. We may have fought ourselves to some kind of a stalemate in the Helmand River Valley, I'm not sure yet. We are sort of stalemated, moving slowly forward maybe in the P2K, in the greater Paktia area. We've pulled out of Nuristan and Konar, which I think was the right, or northern Konar, which I think was the right thing to do. Nevertheless, it was a significant information victory for the enemy. It does provide a certain degree of safe haven. There was more risk entailed in that. We're losing in Farah. We're not even contesting Farah. And I could go through a whole other areas in the country where we're basically not even contesting the situation, and therefore we're losing. Um, if you don't understand that, then you don't understand the, the context in which this discussion is actually being had. Because I've heard things come out of the mouths of, of people who should know better that imply that, or not imply, but that state, that if we keep our forces the same, the situation will remain the same. And we can tinker around the margins with training more Afghans or more counterterrorism or other things like that. And the problem is that the, because the situation is not now stable, because we are now losing, if we keep the force levels the same, we will lose more. And the situation will continue to deteriorate. 